What is going on guys, Alex here, and the iPhone 4S was released in 2013, and four years later it's still getting software updates, and it's performing pretty well. You can grab one these days for about $150, but is it worth it? So let's find out. So guys, this is the iPhone 5S, a phone that is coming up to now being 5 years old. Considering its age, it actually packs a decent amount of performance, especially at a low price tag these days. So let's start by taking a look at the design. The design of this iPhone is honestly one of my favourite designs Apple has ever made, and it's kind of just one of those designs that blends into any setting, and it's just kind of sleek, stylish and elegant all at the same time. The construction for this device is mainly aluminium, which makes it just a little bit slippery when you're holding it, but it feels premium at a weight of 112 grams. The phone itself is 7.6mm thick, which honestly isn't the thinnest of devices, but given its size, it feels comfortable enough in the hand, and honestly I wouldn't have liked it if it was any thinner than this. Around the back is where the aluminium shell really comes into play with the shiny Apple logo and the shiny iPhone logos and all the different subtexts that you need there, as well as two glass accents along the top and the bottom. Now this top one houses the 8 megapixel camera unit, which we'll get onto a little bit later, and the bottom one serves no real purpose apart from being an antenna. Along the top of this phone is the power button, which is placed to the perfect spot for me considering the phone's size, and that's all that's on the top. Along the bottom we then find the microphone and speaker units, the headphone jack and the lightning port. And finally along the left hand side is the volume buttons and the silent switch. Around the front of the phone we find the selfie camera, the earpiece speaker and the fingerprint scanner, as well as the 4.0 inch IPS LCD panel. Now this screen has a resolution of 1136 by 640 and is honestly one of the best looking screens for a phone of this age. Although the resolution isn't even 720p, given its size and the pixel density and the colour representation and also the viewing angles, honestly it makes for one awesome experience. The fingerprint scanner is also surprisingly snappy considering its age. Considering this was the first Apple device to have a fingerprint scanner, they started off pretty well with this device. It's not as fast as a up-to-date iPhone like the iPhone 7 or 7 Plus, or even as fast as the OnePlus 2 which I will never stop mentioning in videos apparently. But considering its age and considering the price point that you can buy this phone for, it definitely outperforms any phone in this price range. On the camera side we have a rear 8 megapixel camera and a 1.2 megapixel selfie camera. The rear camera performs surprisingly well, especially if you're looking to post to social media, but but unfortunately the same cannot be said for the selfie camera which considering its small sensor size is just a little bit too grainy and doesn't really make for the best of photos. The photos you take on the selfie camera may be okay for social media sharing but honestly I'd avoid using them. On the spec side we have the Apple A7 processor paired with 1GB of RAM. So yes it'll be better than the iPhone 5 or even the iPhone 4S. If you want to see if either of those phones are still worth it there are links in the description below. And speaking of performance, the performance on this phone is not the most impressive but considering its age and the price point that you can get it for right now, it's not too bad. Multitasking between standard system UI apps like the settings app or the photos app and then apps such as Instagram, Snapchat and Spotify honestly isn't all that bad of an experience. Occasionally it won't render the touches that I'm actually doing on the screen because of the lag that it's experiencing but honestly Honestly, this lag isn't too noticeable and it is quite well disguised in the system UI. If we recall opening up Instagram in the iPhone 4S is it still worth it video which I did just recently, you can see here it's just taking forever to open, which is definitely not the case on this iPhone. And another upside about buying this iPhone is that it will get iOS 11. It's actually on the supported device list on the Apple website to get iOS 11, which I think is pretty impressive. Hopefully they actually focus on efficiency and performance with this phone. This is honestly a great contender for anyone in the budget market right now. And finally now we have the battery life. So power on this phone is a 1560mAh cell, which charges up a little bit too slow for my liking. And honestly the battery life itself is just about average. You don't really tend to get more than 3 or 4 hours of screen on time using this phone, but using moderate usage during a day, it'll last pretty much from about 8 o'clock in the morning to probably about 5 o'clock in the evening. If there was one fault that I had with this phone, it would honestly be the fact that it is 4 inches in size, which is just way too small for my personal use. Personally, as I use the OnePlus 2, this phone is 5.5 inches in screen size, and it's pretty much the perfect size for my hand. So going back to using a 4-inch phone is honestly like holding a Nokia 3310. It just feels absolutely tiny. Of course, this isn't an issue if you've been using phones of this size, or even if you switch down, you'll get used to it in a couple of days. But overall, I honestly think this phone is definitely one of the best contenders in the budget market right now. You can pick one up for $100 to $150 right now on eBay in pretty good condition. So if you're in the market for a low-budget phone that performs well and will get iOS 11, then this is the phone for you. So thank you guys for watching and I will catch you in my next video.